students we all know that verb is considered the most important part of speech in english grammar and that the verbs have five properties which are voice mood tense person and number we often see these in different sentences in this video you will learn about voice and its active and passive forms so let's begin a voice is that form of a verb which shows that the person or thing denoted by the subject does something or has something done to it see the given sentences the first sentence says the mother cooks the food the second sentence says the food is cooked by the mother let's compare these two sentences when we compare these two sentences we find that both the sentences mean the same thing but with a difference that is in the first sentence the subject is the doer the performer of the verb in the second sentence the subject is the receiver of the verb the voice has two forms which are active and passive let's study about them starting with the active voice when the subject of the sentence performs the verb the verb is called to be in the active voice see the given example this squirrel is eating an apple here the subject is squirrel is performing the verb that is eating now notice the passive voice when the subject of the sentence receives the verb the verb is called to be in the passive voice see the given example an apple is being eaten by this squirrel here the subject apple is receiving the action the verb see a few more examples of these two voices let's learn how to change the voice from active to passive to do so we have to follow certain rules which are as follow rule 1 we change the subject of the active voice into object and the object into subject it means subject and object of the sentence exchange their position see the given example in the given example the subject the children has exchanged its position with the object the flowers rule 2 we add by before the new object notice it in the given example rule 3 we use only the past participle form of verbs see the use of verbs in the given example rule 4 we use certain sets of auxiliary verbs with the principal verbs see the following given chart the following table clearly brings out the transformation of voice see it carefully while doing the transformation of voice we must keep some points in our notice these are as follow point 1 it is natural and preferable to use the active voice point 2 sentences in the active voice are simple and it is easier to understand them point 3 the use of passive voice is preferred in two cases the first when we do not know who has performed the action the case 2 when the action itself is more important than knowing who performed it or what caused it see the given example to understand it better point 4 the verbs which do not take or have objects cannot be expressed in the passive see the given example here the verb doesn't have any object point 
we work on with eight tenses out of twelve tenses. These are present simple, present continuous, present perfect, past simple, past continuous, past perfect, future simple and future perfect. The tenses we do not work on with are future continuous and present past and future perfect continuous. Point 6. The detransitive verbs can have two passive voice where any one of the objects direct or indirect can be changed into new subject. Usually we change indirect object into subject. Point 7. In case the subject of the active voice is a pronoun. We use its objective case in the passive voice. See the table given below. We have learned how to change the voice of assertive sentences from active to passive. Let's learn how to do the same with interrogative and imperative sentences. Starting with the interrogative sentences. Let's learn step by step. First of all, we change the interrogative active voice into the assertive active voice. In step 2, we follow all the rules which are followed with the assertive sentences to change the voice into passive. In step 3, we take the auxiliary verb of passive voice at the beginning. And in step 4, if we have the question verb, we take it before the auxiliary verb. Understand it through the given examples. The sentence 1 is showing the interrogative active voice that we change into the assertive active voice in sentence 2. In sentence 3, we follow the step 2 and change its voice into passive. The sentence 4 follows the step 3 where we take the auxiliary verb at the beginning. The last sentence shows the application of the question word. See some more examples to understand it. For changing the voice of imperative sentences, from active to passive, we choose any one of the given ways. Let's see. Now see these sample exercises and revise all the rules.